People ask me all the time if self-defenders actually need a fast draw to first shot. This video shows us, yes, they do. Welcome to today's active self-protection lesson. I'm your host, John Correa. Today's video comes to us from Natal in Brazil. After thorough testing, I recently changed my everyday OC spray to Palm Personal Defense Spray. It's nasty stuff and I recommend it highly. See these guys in a moto come on a guy and say they're going to rob him, but he's an off-duty MP, so he's going to draw his gun and go to work, knock the guy on the back of the bike down very, very quickly, and the, the rider, he bounces awful hard. He gets the heck out of there. And what's going to happen here is the guy who's laying there, if you go read the news story linked in the description, he didn't make it. He took the what looks to be maybe asphalt temperature challenge or maybe dirt. The other guy ran off. They got him at the emergency room. Now, what you don't see or have a hard time seeing is that this uh, MP is actually shot. He's been shot through the ribs and into the lungs. So you're going to see him here now have to take follow-up actions. Get his gun, his holster out here, put his gun in his holster and put it back on because it's a crap holster is what it looks like to me. Get on his phone and get some follow-up actions here and, and get this guy's gun and put it away. He is in stable condition. Last I saw, this one ends with the good guy doing okay. He did handle his business and we wish him a full recovery. If you want to get better with your handgun skills, including that incredibly important draw to first shot, come join us at the ASP National Conference. Details are in the description or look for us on the training circuit. We train all over the United States. If you hit the link in the description, you will find where I will be next. Out of today's video, I want to think about the incredible importance of paying attention. Also about that critical draw to first shot and about the incredible importance of emotional fitness and staying in the fight. So let's think about these transitional spaces here. The public places where you're at are transitional spaces and therefore you have to be paying attention. You notice here that our MP has a set of external headphones on and you can see right now that he's got the, you know, his Walkman or his phone, whatever it is, in his left hand. And guys, I can't tell you enough, you gotta be able to pay attention to your surroundings and using devices like this, I get it, we all wanna listen to our tunes or a podcast or whatever, you gotta be paying attention to your world, so keep your volume low enough in order to do so or maybe even one ear open. Because he didn't do that, notice he didn't really see these guys until the bad guy has a gun up and out and on him. And the challenge here is for our good guy is that he's drawing from the drop at this point, that he is going to have significant problems because he decides at this moment, oh no, this guy has a gun on me and I have to draw. But when you draw from a drop, you're going to have a heck of a hard time. You better be fast and you better be able to get the gun out in an incredible hurry or not draw from the drop at all. If he'd have been paying attention, he might have had some time and some options to do better stuff. But he decides instead to get the gun out and go. And if you watch and you timed that there, it was about 1.43 seconds from when he ordered oriented on his threat and realized that he had a threat to the time that his gun came out and the first shot went off. And that's when the bad guy's shot went off as well. And I'm pretty sure where he got hit. So this is why we say, friends, a fast and accurate draw and first shot is important. Now, I'm not saying it would have made everything better, but if he'd have had a one second draw to first shot, a 1.2 second draw to first shot, he'd have been ahead of the bad guy and may have not taken a shot himself. Now, there is follow-up shots necessary. A couple things here I want to talk about. Recognize that our good guy is shooting one-handed. Now, he's done enough to the guy that was very close, but he doesn't really get a good hit on the guy in the yellow pants who was the driver because he's firing one-handed. Why is he firing one-handed? Because he still has his phone in his hand. Drop what's in your support hand, get two hands on the gun. You can pick it up later after you win the gunfight. Now he goes back to the first guy here, but notice that there's a shot that goes over the top of our bad guy who's laying down, and that shot isn't helpful. The number one cause of reloading in gunfights is missing. Don't miss. Only shoot fast enough that you can guarantee that you will get hits. And shots that miss the bad guy don't effectively stop the threat. They allow him to stay in the fight. You want to put a shot in him because fibs is what gets him to think about other stuff and then gives you more time. And you notice that there when he finally got another good shot in him is when the bad guy gives up psychologically there. That's actually a psych stop, not a neuromuscular incapacitation or blood loss stop. Now, eventually he's going to finally give up on this guy. And now you got to start follow-up actions. And as the legendary lawman Chuck Haggard says, you got to take those actions in order. Did I hit him? Did it work? Do I need to shoot him again? Now a wider scan. Are his buddies gone? Did he bring anybody else to the fight? Next thing you got to do, am I hit? Is everybody else around me okay? 
And one thing I see our good guy not do here is he doesn't do any check of himself. Am I hit? And under adrenaline, you may not recognize you've been shot. You better do a blood check. And that's the kind of thing that you learn in a trauma medical class. But he does some good stuff here. He does get the gun away from the bad guy. If you have to stay in the vicinity of a downed attacker, you need to get the gun away from him. That said, though, he left that gun fairly close. He kicked it a little ways away from him. But we've seen videos in the past where bad guys come back to life and, and you know, resurrect, not resurrect, but they resuscitate after having regained some blood flow. So kick that gun way the heck away from him if you have to stay in his vicinity. And I get the fact that he's gonna beat on this guy a little bit here. He's angry at him, the guy shot him, I totally get it. But don't become a predator, everybody. Take better follow-up actions. That doesn't do anything to make him safer and he needs to get some medical help for himself as well. So now he's gonna start taking follow-up actions. You wanna be the first one on the phone to 911. You wanna have good descriptions of the bad guys. You want them to know what is going on. And again, you wanna know the aftermath of a deadly force encounter and have your trauma medical equipment on you and have the skills and ability to use it. So always keep your med kit nearby. Always keep the skills high for that as well. Overall sense, this guy did a fine job. He repelled the attack. One of those guys took the room temperature challenge. The other guy scampered off. Our good guy lived to see another day. So I'm gonna say he covered his ASP.